Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be installing a Burton Racing Coil and Plug Conversion Kit. I uh, picked this up from probably about a month or two ago, but I had to send my ECU out and have them install the chip. So I've got everything back now. So we're going to do a quick unboxing, show you what it comes with, and then we'll get started. All right, so the first thing we have is the plate that you need to hold the coils on. These are actually pretty hard to find. These are, um, this one for the LS, the VTEC ones are more readily available. Next, we have the conversion harness. Quality on this looks really nice. Next, we have the coils. Also have the shrink wrap you need to install the harness, and then they put in a lanyard, a koozie, some business cards, ring pop, more business cards. We have the ECU, that's for the S300 on this side, and this is where they installed the uh, chip. So let's get this thing installed. It also comes with complete instructions and a pretty big Burton Racing sticker. And that's everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to remove this. Uh, wire cover and pull out all the spark plug wires so i'm already running into my first problem so on this b20 valve cover you see that little piece of metal sticking up right here when i go to set the plate on here the plate doesn't sit flush like i can't get any bolts on there because of that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, plug wires back in and I'm just going to take a Dremel tool and cut that down. So once you shave down that little bump, you can see the plate just drops right in. And I'll just put the two normal 8 corn nuts here, but I have the downstar spikes. So next I'm going to put the coils in and it comes with the hardware to bolt each one in. Alright, so the plate's on and the coils are on. I made a mistake and I bought uh, coils for a K20. Those do not work for LS, they're too long. So I just ran back to the store and returned those and picked up these are for like a O2 Civic Si, a D17 motor. So what you have to do is right here, they have the ear coming off where the bolt would normally go through to hold them down. You have to trim those off. So, I mean, they're in there pretty tight, but I may come back and make some brackets that's kind of shaped like a Z just to hold over top of them because each one has a little threaded hole right here I can use but we'll see if they pop in or not so the Civic coils kept popping out while I was driving so I had this uh, wire cover on the car before and it came with these little um, I guess unions or whatever you would call them with these uh, threaded Allen keys so what I did is I put those on there put a couple washers on each one and I have RSX coils right here and they actually bolt down to the plate. So I'm gonna show you how I mount these in there. All right, so this is what it looks like with the plate on. They're all bolted down except for the number two cylinder because of this bolt right here. Even if I take the bolt out, there's still a stud sticking up. So it won't turn all the way straight to line up with the hole that's already there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill and tap this hole and then all of them will be bolted in. But they're in there really snug and secure. So that's what I was after. So I ended up taking the threads out of the hex threaded rods that I showed you in an earlier clip and just put some Allen key bolts in here. So that way I didn't have to re-drill this. So I don't know if you can see, but the bolts underneath are there and it's all secured. So I find this is the best way to do it for a 
non VTEC motor. So, next, we're going to remove the distributor cap. It's just uh, three eight millimeter bolts, I believe. So, I'm going to pull that off real quick and show you the modification you have to do to the distributor. Once you have the cap off, uh, you'll have a distributor rotor right here you need to take off. Just make sure this side's facing towards the front of the car and there'll be a screw right in the back of here. It's a Phillips head. If this isn't facing the right way, you can just bump the ignition by trying to start it, but just don't hold it down too long. And this will start to turn. Just keep checking until you get it the right way. Once you have the rotor off, there'll just be this plastic piece right here, just the slides off. You're gonna to wanna to get out the ignition coil and the igniter. So there's two Phillips head screws here and there's two Phillips head screws down here. So once you have your distributor broken down, you'll have three wires left over. It's a blue one, a black and green, and a yellow with a green. So you wanna to go to the distributor plug. This is the one that's on there. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull out the lock. Once you have the lock out, you want to remove those three wires by just using a pick and sliding the wires out. So once you have those depinned, I just snip the ends off of this side. I'm just going to pull them straight through. And that's done. Once you get the wires removed from the harness, you want to put on your distributor cap. Um, this is made by VSM, uh, it's a lot cheaper than the billet units that they sell for like a hundred bucks. This one was like 35. I picked this one up off of eBay. It does a job. It's black. I like it. So next, on the harness side, you have three clips. Uh, two spade connectors and one circle ring terminal. Uh, they suggest grounding it off to this distributor bolt right here. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to take this and wrap this around the bottom like that. And we're going to ground that out. So the wires all ran and tucked under here. We have it grounded out back there. So on the wiring harness for the car side, you have to pull off this uh, blue lock with some needle nose pliers. And you're going to deep in the black and green and the blue wire. I believe the black and green is going to be a 12 volt and the other one is going to be the RPM signal. Once you depend the engine side of the harness, you'll have the black and green and the blue wire. The big one's going to, the thicker wire is the power, the smaller one's the RPM signal. So if you look on your Burton Racing harness, there's a thin wire and a thick wire. So the thick wire is going to go to the thick because it's a 12 volt and the thin one's going to the RPM signal. So you have to, for OBD2, you have to trim the spade connector down to fit in here. For OBD1, this is direct plug and play. So these will go right in. And then you want to shrink wrap them with the supplied shrink wrap they give you. So I have the two uh, spade connectors hooked up together and the shrink wrap just waiting to go on. I ran the harness back through here and it's coming through where my heater core comes. So you can see Burton Racing gives you a boatload of length to work with. So you can pretty much install this anywhere. Get your ECUs installed. So right now I'm going to pull out this uh, S300 V2. And stick the V3 in there. All right, so the whole kit's installed. Cleans the engine bay up a lot. I'm still worried about these coils popping out. So I'm definitely gonna end up making something to hold these down. Uh, but I gotta pick up some metal or something for that. So I don't drive the car every day, so it'll be fine. The 12 volt wire right here and the RPM signal are just sitting right here so I can test start it. So I'm gonna do that right now. Hopefully it fires right up. Alright, so here we go.
Alright guys, I'm pretty excited this car fired over first try. I've never installed one of these coil and plug kits before. It was actually pretty easy, straightforward. It comes with everything that you need. But I can't wait to take this out and test it out, see if the car feels any different. But uh, make sure you guys go check out Burton Racing either on their Instagram, Facebook, and they also have a YouTube channel. They're really cool guys over there. Quick turnaround time. I would highly suggest them. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them at the bottom. And like always, I'll get back to you. But until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.